Are you saved? Are you saved? Don't cap your whole shia with Israel united in Christ. And what we teach is that the so-called Ugandans, because you are not Ugandans, that you are the Israelites according to the Bible. So a lot of our people in the Christian church, they think they saved. Let's open up with Matthew chapter 24 and verse 11. Matthew 24 and verse 11. Matter of fact, yeah, Matthew 24 and 11. Let's get there first. The book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many hey, shall... Uh, read it again, Ashbear. Read it from the top, from the top. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. So first and foremost, you gotta ask yourself, are you saved from the false prophets that shall rise and deceive many? No, because in Uganda, our people have been deceived. You think Christ is a white man? Christ is not a white man, according to the Bible. So a lot of our people, you have been deceived, and it said, read on, keep reading. Verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So you got to ask yourself, endure what? It said, he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Endure what? Let's jump up real quick. And let's start in verse 4. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And Have we been deceived? Who came saying they Christian, saying they are Christ, the so-called white man? He came saying that he is Christian. He came saying that he is Christ. And Christ is not a white man, according to the Bible. Let's get there. And we're going to get this every week. Go to Revelation chapter 1. Let's get the true depiction of Christ and pull the image up for me. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. The, and root, word, the root word of revelation is reveal. Reveal. John the Revelator is about to reveal the image of Christ to you. Read. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Read. Verse 2. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. So let's see. Let's see what John the Revelator saw. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So he seen Jesus Christ's head. He said his head and his hair is white like wool. Who got hair like sheep? Who got thick, woolly hair? Thick, curly hair. You so-called black people in Uganda got thick, curly hair. And the reason why I say so-called black people in Uganda, because you are the Israelites, according to the Bible. Read on. As white as snow. Just like this old man in the middle. His hair is white as snow. Read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And he's talking about the whites of his eyes. The whites of his eyes is as a flame of fire. Why? Because according to Genesis 49 and 12, Jesus Christ drunk wine. Read on. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. What color is brass? Brass is a derivative of brown. Brass is brown. So he said his feet were so brown that they looked like they'd been burned in the furnace. If his feet black, his face is black. Look at the image of the white, uh, look at the image of the black man on the right. Christ is a dark skinned man like that. So no, you have not been saved from that false image of Christ. Why? Because they still pushing it throughout the earth. Now go right back to where you was at. Matthew 24. The book verse of Matthew. 5. 
the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Our people have not been saved from the deceitfulness that's going throughout the earth. The people you got to still think Christ is a white man. No matter how many times we sit up here and read this scripture, a lot of y'all still go with the white image of Christ with no scriptural proof. Your pastor in the Christian church still teach the white image of Christ with no scriptural proof. You can't find one scripture in the Bible that says Jesus Christ has blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin. It's not there. Read on. Verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You got to ask yourself, are you saved from war? Because our people think they're saved. You go to a church on Sunday, uh, the pastor pull out a bucket, he fill it up with water, he, he, he dump you in the water, then you come out of the water and you say you say. Matter of fact, get the uh, video real quick. Get the one about the mother of all bombs. And let me know if you saved from this yet. The mother of all bombs. Pull that video for me. Let me show you what type of weaponry America got. These European powers have. Okay, start it back while I read it. Start it back while I read it. From the beginning. Okay, here's the play. It said, meet the father of all bombs. It was born in Russia in 2007. Russia claims it's the most powerful thermobaric bomb ever made. So they nicknamed it the father of all bombs. CNN cannot independently confirm what the video purports to show. Russia says it's even more powerful than the mother of all bombs. U.S. military analysis say Russia could be right if the data they have is accurate. Moab is the most powerful non-nuclear bomb the U.S. has in its arsenal. It was used for the first time on April 13th to destroy ISIS tunnels in Afghanistan. Russia says Moab is four times more powerful than Moab. With impact radius of nearly 984 feet, twice that of Moab. Military analysis say it could cause massive destruction on a scale unseen. Okay, you can drop that. The Moab has never been used in combat. Now get the Moab. So are you saved from war? No, you're not saved from war. You go to church every Sunday and you think you, 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 you're jumping around and you're dancing around in church and you're talking about you saved. No, you're not saved. You're not saved from war. Get the mother of all bumps. The video with the mother of all bumps. So look, our people must wake, wake up in Uganda. Our people must repent. They must come back to their nationalities as the Israelites. You're not getting in the kingdom of heaven as a Christian. You're not getting in the kingdom, of, I mean, or uh, as a Baptist. You're not getting in the kingdom of heaven as a Jehovah Witness. You're not getting in the kingdom of heaven as a born again. You're not getting in the kingdom of heaven as a seventh day Adventist. You're not getting in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, let me see. Did y'all get did y'all get the video of the mother of all bombs? Did no, but I got I have one I can share, Captain. Okay. Let's get the other one. Okay. okay, you see this? This is the mother of all bombs. The U.S. dropped the mother of all bombs in Afghanistan. This is the largest nuclear bomb that was created. 
And this footage right here comes from uh, 2003. Look at this right here. And now people think they're saved. You're not saved yet. So you're not saved. The, 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 the powers that be still have these type of weapons of mass destruction. Okay, so now I go from there, right back to Matthew 24. You can drop that. And let's pick up at verse 6. The book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Read. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Now we've not been hearing the wars and rumors of wars. But Christ said, look, hey, don't be troubled. The end is not yet. But we're not saved from these things. Read on. For nation shall rise against nation. Has not nation been rising against nation? Read. And kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. There shall be famines. Are you saved from famines? The, the, uh, the 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 uh the Caucasian powers that be, Britain, the U.S. not just the U.S. China, all of them control the exports and the imports of water in Uganda. They control the exports and imports of food in Uganda. They control all of that. So are you saved from famine? No. If the white man cut off your water, what y'all gonna do in Uganda? What will you do in Uganda if the white man cut off your water? You got no fresh, clean drinking water. If they, uh, if they cut off your supply of food, what would you do in Uganda? Read on. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Now look, I'm on, I got a video and it's uh, with Kenneth Copeland. Cause it said famines. Right now, COVID-19, has locked down the whole world. And it, it, it has caused some countries to have famines. COVID-19 is a pestilence. And it has caused some countries to have famines, uh, economic collapse, all types of uh, problems have stemmed forth from COVID-19. Now I'm gonna show you how your pastors get down. Get that real quick, uh, Kenneth Copeland and blowing the wind of God. Win! Destroyed forever, you are destroyed forever, and you'll never be back. And you'll and you'll never be back. Okay, that's it on it right there. So, is you saved from COVID 19? No, even after your pastor, this is a famous pastor right here named Kenneth Copeland in the U.S., he traveled to Africa plenty of times. Some of you might even sat in his services. He said he blow the wind of God. And COVID-19 is gone and destroyed forever. That is a lie. That's why I asked you in the beginning, are you saved from these false prophets, these false teachings of Christ, these false faith healings? Because guess what? COVID-19 is still here after your pastor has blown the wind of God. <laughs> okay, go right back to what we was at. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 8. Read Ooh. verse 7 again. Verse 7. For yeah. nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. So are we saved from famines? Are we saved from 
pestilences? Are we saved from earthquakes? No. An earthquake can happen at any time. Are you saved from war? No. War can break out at any time. It'd be more coups and civil wars in Africa than any other country on the planet Earth. Are you saved from them things? No. It can happen at any time. You're not even saved from your own sins. Read on. Verse 8. And these are the beginning of sorrows. He said, look, and that, that's just the beginning of sorrows. A lot of our people in Uganda still live in poverty. They're still in poverty. Are they saved? No, they're not saved. No, they are not saved. Look, let's go to second edge just real quick. And I'm going to show you some. And let's start at verse 49. Start at 48. Second edge is 74 days. Listen to this, people of Uganda. My the brothers book, and sisters of Uganda. The book of second edge in the Apocrypha, chapter 7 and verse 48. O thou Adam, what hast thou done? For though, for, thou, for though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee. So we are not saved from sin and we're not saved from death yet. Adam fell and now all of us, we fall after Adam, after, after the same uh, similar to the Adam. We die because of sin. Read on. For what profit is it unto us? If there be promised us an immortal time. So the Lord has promised us immortality. Immortality. So you're not saved from death yet. Read on. Whereas we have done the works that bring death. But we constantly do the works that bring death. Our people continue to sin. Y'all love bushmeat in Uganda. Oh, man, y'all love the bushmeat. Every time we read Leviticus chapter 11 about the bushmeat, we did a radio show a couple of weeks ago in Uganda and, you, and, and in Ghana and in other different countries in Africa. We talked about the bush meat. The callers called in and had threw a fit. And then these are the same Christians that want salvation from God. Read on. Verse 50. And that there is promise us an everlasting hope, whereas ourselves being most wicked are made vain. So... God has promised us everlasting hope, but guess what? Our people still are in wickedness. Read on. You haven't been saved. Read on. And that there are laid up for us dwellings of health and safety. It said there are laid up for us dwellings of health and safety. Do you got to, are you worried about, are you saved from Ebola? No, you're not saved from Ebola. Are you saved from the yellow fever? No, you're not saved from the yellow fever. Are you saved from the COVID-19? No, you're not uh, uh, saved from the COVID-19. Africa got the most least cases of COVID-19, but guess what? The white man still has managed to shut down the country. He still has managed to shut down the majority of all the countries in Africa and, and mess with your economy as well. Read on. Whereas we have lived wickedly. Whereas we have lived wickedly. So are you dwelling in health and safety? No. Do you have immortality? No, you're not saved. Now, y'all need to understand, who is salvation for? Who is salvation for? Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Who is salvation for? Because in the Christian church, they teach you that salvation is for everybody. Who do the white man need to be saved from? Who do the white man need to be saved from? Himself? Because he the one who has the power. Who do the Chinese need to be saved from? Themselves? Because they the ones who have the power. Meanwhile, the people of Uganda, you have no power. You, you don't control the imports and exports of food, water, clothing. You go to your enemies in want of all things. So now, uh, what did I just tell you to get? The book of Matthew, chapter 1 and verse 21. Read. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. You see that Jesus has saved his people from their sins. Now, a lot of y'all think, <clears throat> a lot of y'all think his people is talking about everybody oh well 
His people talking about the ones that follow Christ. No. Let's see who his people is. Let's go to uh, Luke 1 and verse 68. The book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Lord God of Israel, read. For he have visited and redeemed his people. You see that? His people is Israel, the Israelites. The people of Uganda, you Bantu tribes, you are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. You are God's chosen people. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 through 68, those curses will come upon the Israelites for breaking the commandments. Slavery and colonization is the curses of, is the curses of God. Who control your resources? Who control your resources? The other nations do. So how could you say that you are saved when the other nations control your whole way of life? Read that again. Verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people and have raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of the servant David. You see that for us. Salvation is for us, the Israelites. Read on. As he spake by the mouth of these holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be saved from our enemies. Are you saved from your enemies? No. And look, I'm going to tell you what's so crazy about the Christian church. <laughs> Man, y'all, is funny. When we ask you who your enemy is, you say the devil. You say the devil. The devil is not the one controlling your imports and exports of food. When I put it like this, let's say it like this. You say that uh, when we ask you who you say from, you say the devil. But according to the Bible, the white man is the devil. And the devil controls your imports and exports of food. You understand? <laughs> so you're not saved from the devil. The white man is the devil the Bible speaks for. Uh, you're not saved. Read on. And from the hand of all that hate us. Everybody hates you. Why? Because of your color of your skin. They hate your hair. They hate your nose. They hate everything about you. Why? Because we are God's chosen people. We are the Israelites the Bible speaks of. Everybody hates you. Are you saved from your enemies? Are you saved from the hand of all that hate you? Now, look, I'm going to show you something about these enemies. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And let's start at 48. Because I've been quoting this the whole time, but now it's time to read the scripture. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. So, look, these are the curses of God that came upon the Israelites for breaking God's commandments. Read. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. Are you still serving your enemies? Yes, you're still serving your enemies. You got to go to the Chinese for a job. You got to go to the East Indians for a job. You got to go to the white man for a job. Read on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Who sent your enemies against you? The Lord sent your enemies against you. Are you saved from these enemies? No. Why? Read on. In hunger. Because you got to go to these enemies for food. Read. And then first, you got to go to these enemies for water. So are you saved from these enemies? No. They can stop your supply of food and they can stop your supply of water at any given time. Read on. And then nakedness. And in nakedness, you got to go to them for the raw material or the textiles to make your clothing. Look at where your clothing made in Bangladesh, made in Taiwan, made in Italy. Why is not made in Uganda? Read. And in want of all things. Anything you want. If you want education, you got to go to your enemies for education. A social security card. A passport to travel. You got to go to your enemies. The, your, your enemies, the white man, controls travel throughout Africa. Meaning... If you in Uganda, let's just say if you in Uganda, you need a passport to go to Ghana. 
you need uh, a visa to go to these places. Meanwhile, the white man, he can travel all throughout Africa freely. So you are not safe from your enemies that control the water, the food, and everything. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And the same enemy that controls everything in Uganda, guess what? He put yokes of iron upon your neck in slavery. This gives you an idea of who, who this enemy is. Because a lot of y'all will say Satan. Well, guess what? The white man is the devil. The Bible speaks of. Go from there real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. The, the, the identify these enemies. The curses that came upon us for breaking God's commandments help us identify who our enemies are. Read. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Egypt is a Greek word for bondage or slavery. Matter of fact, get that real quick. Exodus 20, verse 2. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is synonymous or a synonym for bondage, slavery. So replace the word Egypt with slavery. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into slavery again with ships. What people went into slavery with ships? They happened to our people in Uganda. You was marched across Central to the West Coast of Africa, and you was put on slave ships, cargo slave ships, and you were sold as bond men and bond women around the world. Read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Guess what? Your enemies sold you. Your enemies sold you. Read. For bond men and bond women. They sold you for bond men and bond women. And no man was, shall buy you. You was forced to pick cotton. You was forced to chop sugar cane. You was forced to work in the mines. And guess what? You're, you're not saved to this day. You got something called uh, the Uganda house girls. The Uganda house girls where they go and they sit up there. Uh, these women, they go and try to seek work in Arab countries and the Arabs end up slaving, uh, enslaving them. Matter of fact, because uh, a lot of these, a lot of people in Uganda think they slave. I need y'all to... Uh, Pull up the video about slavery in Libya today. Find that video for me because I wasn't able to send it to you. Slavery in Libya today. Pull that video up for me. And while y'all finding that, read Deuteronomy 28 to 68 one more time. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So we went into slavery with ships. Why? Because we broke the commandments of God. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, really? thou shalt see it no more again. Moses told us, look, we, we weren't going to see slavery no more again. But guess what? We broke God's commandments. And now the way that he telling us that we was going to go into slavery, it happened. It came to pass. Read on. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Wherever well, we don't slave ships land, you're going to be sold to your enemies. So remember what we read in Luke chapter 1, verse 68. That we should be saved from our enemies. Read. For bond men and bond women. Slave men and slave women, read. And no man shall buy you. Or buy, no man shall save you or buy you out, uh, buy you out of slavery, or buy you back from the slave master. No man was able to save us. Many have tried, all have failed. The only man that's going to be able to save us from our enemies is Christ. Like we read in Luke chapter 1, 68 through 71. Now, why are we waiting on them to pull that video up? Because you're not saved from slavery. Y'all got the video for me yet? Uh, slavery in Libya? Let me see if you saved from slavery yet. 
Cap, is this one good, Cap? This one? I guess so. Is it is it talking about the slave trade in, in Libya? Yeah, slavery in Uganda, yes, sir. Okay, let's see what it's talking about. No, uh, no, not that one right there. I think uh, I want the one slavery in Libya. And uh, while you pulling that one up, go from there real quick to uh, let's go still deal with who salvation is for. Now go to Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, because we already showed you in Matthew 1 and 21 that Christ will be saving his people. And who are his people? The Israelites. Salvation is not for everybody. I know y'all want everybody to be saved, but everybody don't need to be saved. We need to be saved from who? We need to be saved from them. We need to be saved from them. So now look, let's go from there to Matthew 24, 15, verse 24. The book of Matthew, chapter 15 and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, it's one called migrants being sold in Libya. That's what I want. He said, I've only been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now look at this, y'all. This is slavery in Libya to this day. Are you saved from slavery, slavery in Libya? Okay, hit play. A man addressing an unseen crowd. Big strong boys for farm work, he says. 400. 700. 700. 800. The numbers roll in. These men are sold for 1,200 Libyan pounds, $400 a piece. Pause that. Pause that. Of human being. You have brothers and sisters of Uganda, Ghana, Sierra Leone, Cameroon, still being sold as slaves to this day. And who is buying them? The Arabs. And that's prophecy. Get that real quick in Joel chapter 3. The book of Joel chapter 3 and verse 1. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. So the valley of Jehoshaphat is talking about Armageddon, read. And will plead with them. There for my people. See, and for this is how you know. This, this is talking about salvation. When God, God said, look, I'm going to plead with the other nations for my people. And how is he going to plead with them? Go to Isaiah 66. Verse 14. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 16. For by fire and by sword... Will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. You see that? That's how he's going to plead with them. By fire and by sword. That's how he's going to plead with the other nations that has took it, uh, that has enslaved the nation of Israel, that has killed the nation of Israel. Read on. I mean, go right back to Joel 3. Joel chapter 3 and verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel. That's why you see the conflict that's going on in the Middle East. The Lord said he gonna gather all nations together to plead with them for his people, Israel. That's talking about you brothers and sisters in Uganda. We are the Israelites according to the Bible, read on. Whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Who parted uh, the land of Israel? The so-called white man who put, uh, uh, pretends to be a Jew and the so-called Palestinians, the Arabs. They parted the land. And when did they part the land? When did this take place? In 1948, read on. And they have cast lots for my people. And I've given a boy for an harlot 
Cash so, lots for my people is what we just seen. Them saying uh, three, uh, three black men, three slaves, three so-called African slaves for 400 each. That's casting lots when they bid on you. Uh, you do you got 1,300 Libyan pounds? Do you got 14 Libyan pounds? Sold to the man that got 1,500 Libyan pounds. That's casting lots, Reed. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Now look, let's see what nation's involved in this, Reed. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyree and Zidon? So Tyree and Zidon, them are the Hermetic nations, read on. And all the coast of Palestine. And the Palestine, the Palestinians, the, the, the coast of Palestine make up who? The Arabs. The Arabs. So the Arabs will be involved in your slavery. Okay, let's drop that. Now go right back to the video. Another man claiming to be a buyer. Off camera, someone asks, what happened to the ones from Niger? Sold off, he's told. CNN was sent this footage by contact. After months of working, we were able to verify the authenticity of what you see here. We decided to travel to Libya to try and see for ourselves. We're now in Tripoli and we're starting to get a little bit more of a sense of how this all works. Our contacts are telling us that there are one to two of these auctions every month and that there is one happening in the next few hours. So we're gonna head out of town and see if we can get some sort of access to it. For the safety of our contacts, we have agreed not to divulge the location of this auction, but the town we're driving to isn't the only one. Night falls. We travel through nondescript suburban neighborhoods, pretending to look for a missing person. Eventually, we stop outside a house like any other. Adjust our secret cameras. And wait. Finally, it's time to move. We're ushered into one of two auctions happening on this same night. Crouched at the back of the yard, a floodlight obscuring much of the scene. One by one, men are brought out as the bidding begins. 400. 500. 550. 600. 650. 700. Very quickly, it's over. Okay, I right, dropped that video right there. Okay, read your F3 in three, one more time. So what you heard at the end of the video was them casting lots. Listen to what the Bible say, the Bible is a true book. The read. book of Joel, chapter three and verse three. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. You see that? They have uh, cast lots for my people. You just witnessed them casting lots for God's people. So you got to ask yourself, are you saved from slavery? Are you saved from your enemies? Are you saved from those that hate you? Are you saved from those that control the water in your country, control the food in your country, control the economy in your country? Are you saved? No, you are not saved yet. Get that real quick in Jeremiah 23. Going right back, who salvation is for. Jeremiah chapter 23, and let's read verse 6. The book of Jeremiah. I say, this, this is the prophecy, read. Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 6. In his days, Judah shall be saved. In his days, this time about the days of Christ. A lot of y'all, you just learning today that Jesus Christ is a black man according to the Bible. A lot of y'all was looking for 
the same white man that's oppressing you to come back and save you. You're not saved from oppression. You're not saved from poverty. You're not saved from sickness. The COVID-19 is still affecting the world. Read on. And Israel shall dwell safely. You see that? You're not dwelling safely in the land of Uganda. Read that again. In his days, Judah shall be saved. In his days, the days of Christ. Because a lot of y'all in the Christian church talking about you are saved and you are not saved. Read. And Israel shall dwell safely. And, and Israel is not dwelling safely. We are not dwelling safely. Safely, read. And this is he. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. You see that? And that's talking about Christ. Go from there real quick to uh, Jeremiah 46 and verse 27. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 46 and verse 27. But fear not thou, O my servant Jacob, and be not dismayed. We oh, are the servants of God. You so-called Bantu people of Uganda. You are the servants of God. But you, you're not serving God. You're not keeping his commandments. Read. And be not dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save thee from afar off. Guess, guess what? The, the, slave, uh, the, uh, the slaves that was uh, held captive in America and in the, the, the islands and in the other countries, them the ones that he going to save us from far off. Read on. And thy seed from the land of their captivity. Listen it, and thy seed from the land of thy captivity. Believe it or not, our people are still in the lands of their captivity. So we have not been saved. So your Christian pastor is lying to you, read. And Jacob shall return. And be in rest and at ease. And we are we at rest? Are we at ease? Read. And none shall make him afraid. Are our people still afraid. Are you not afraid of the COVID 19? Are you not afraid of poverty? Are you not afraid of hunger? So, what are you saved from? Let's go from there real quick. Go to Acts chapter 5. Verse 30. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 30. Read. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel. You see that Christ has been exalted to, uh, to bring repentance to, to be a prince and a savior and to bring repentance to Israel and what else? And forgiveness of sins. And forgiveness of sins. So you want to be saved, go to Acts chapter 3, verse 18. So I know a lot of y'all, you found out today that you are not saved. Acts chapter 3 and verse 18. So how do you get salvation? Read. But those things which God before has shewed by the I mean, mouth. Uh, 3 and 19, 3 and 19. Verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. So he said, repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Have you overcome your sins? No. You have not overcome your sins. Have you overcome uh, for sexual morality with this fornication? No. Have you overcome idolatry? No. A lot of y'all still think Jesus Christ is a white man. That's idolatry. You think the white man is God. That's idolatry. You celebrate Christmas. That's idolatry. Easter. That's idolatry. So you're not saved from your sins. You still eat bush meat. I'm going to show you something about that bush meat. Go to Leviticus chapter 11. In verse 45. So you're not saved from your sins. You're still in sin. The book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 45. Yes. But I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. 
This is the law of the beast and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean and between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. You, you, you got to make a difference between the beast that is to be eaten and the beast that is not to be eaten. A lot of you, you still eat the wrong things. God said, if you eat the wrong thing, it will be abomination to you. And if you abomination, when Christ come back, go to Revelations chapter 21, verse 27. The book of Revelations chapter 21 and verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination so if you defiling your body when christ return if you working in abomination when christ return you will not be saved simple as that read on or make it a lie if you make it a lie and not just make it a lie if you love a lie matter of fact get that real quick jump down to verse 15 22 and 15 revelation chapter 22 and verse 15 for without are dogs and sorcerers. Some of y'all still practice witchcraft. You will not be saved when Christ returns. Read. And whoremongers. Some of you are still whoremongers, sleeping with woman to woman to woman. Some of you women sleep man to man to man. You will not be saved when Christ returns. He said, for without, without what? The kingdom of God, read. And murderers. And murderers, read. And idolaters. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. If you think the white man is God after hearing scripture every week, proving that Jesus Christ is a black man according to the Bible, God is a black man according to the Bible. If you love that lie, you will not get the kingdom of God. Go from now to Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. The book of so the Matthew. You got to must wake up. You must repent. You must stop eating the unclean food, the bush meat. You must stop celebrating Christmas, Easter, and all those false holidays. God gave us holidays to celebrate in Leviticus chapter 23. He gave us holy days. You must come back to God as the Israelite, according to the Bible. Read what you got. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do? that I may have eternal life. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. He says none good but one, that is God. That is God. Read on. But if thou wilt enter into life, You want eternal life? You want the kingdom of God? Read. Keep the commandments. The people of Uganda must keep the commandments. The people of Uganda must keep the commandments if you want eternal life. A lot of y'all, you the, the way you live, you have come so used and accustomed to it that you see it's nothing wrong. You see it's nothing wrong. And, and you you and you pining away in your sins. You pining in the land of your captivity. According to the uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's go there. So you must repent. You must keep the commandments of God. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. And verse, let me see, and the rest shall pine away in their iniquities. Okay, I think this is Leviticus 26. Matter of fact, drop that real quick. Go to Romans chapter 11, verse 26. So you're the ones who need to be saved. Leviticus 26. Uh, did I say Leviticus 26? Oh, okay, that's the wrong one. Hold on, hold on. Uh, let me get it, let me get it, let me get it. I mean, Romans 11 and 26. The book of Romans, chapter 11 and verse 26. Okay. And so all Israel shall be saved. You see that all Israel, all Israel shall be saved. Read. As it is written, 
there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. You see that? The deliverer is talking about Christ. Jacob is talking about Israel. All Israel should be saved. All nations would not be saved. Go from there real quick to Lamentations 5. And let's start at verse 2. The book of Lamentations, chapter 5 and verse 2. Yes, sir. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. It is not strangers still in our land. Inherit uh, Israel was our inheritance, read. Really. Our houses to aliens. The white man is in our land, pretending to be us, read. We are orphans. And fatherless. Are not um, our children's orphans? Are not our children growing up fatherless? Read. Our mothers are as widows. And not our women as widows? So have we been saved from this oppression? Read. We have drunken our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. Do we not drink our water for money? Yes. Is not our wood sold unto us? Yes. Read. Our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. So brothers and sisters of Uganda, we are not saved. We are not saved. We must repent. We must keep the commandments of God. Let's close out with Psalm chapter 19. We are not saved as a yet. But guess what? You got time to get yourself right before Christ returns. Because if you have not repented before Christ returned, and you must repent as an Israelite, you must bethink yourself as an Israelite. If you have not done that by the time Christ returned, you will be put to death with the enemies of the nation of Israel. Psalms chapter 19. The book of Psalms chapter 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So if you want to be converted, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. So with that right there, y'all, we're going to say shalom. Most high Christ bless. If y'all want to learn more, go to www.israelunite.org. Again, that's www.israelunite.org if you want to learn more. Uh, with that, that's today's episode. Are you saved? No, you're not saved yet. <laughs> but look, you still got time before Christ returns to be saved when he comes. We're going to say shalom.